Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and today we're looking at Dear Esteban, a product of last year's Fuck This Jam, a game jam that gives developers a week to create a game in a genre they hate, or at least take issue with. I'm sure you can guess what genre this is meant to point fun at. Much like Dear Esther, uh, we just sort of wander around as we get talked at, because, you know, it's a very artistic depth that this kind of genre has. Dear Esteban, I'm afraid of this place. What if there's an earthquake? All the patrons will be smashed by the motorcycles. That's enough to keep me far, far away. I would be concerned about the giant motorcycle that seems to be circling. Not a, not the worst looking place though. Kind of a cheery autumn. Completely no music though, I'm sure I might have added some in. Just because of the dead microphone hiss you would hear otherwise. Can't go in the water. Alright. When I walked in I was overwhelmed with crowd hanging everywhere and immediately my eyes were drawn to a very large out of place living room chair was being occupied by a large fat man stuffing his face with what appeared to be blue cheese filled lettuce cups. He was on a ventilator one eye was half closed and leaky food on his face and chewing with his mouth open food flying out. I thought, ooh, gross. I don't actually see the large man. However, the audio seems to be coming from a specific point in the sky. Seems a little odd. Also, I can walk into this rock. Because, you know, what artistic message does this rock really represent? What does it really mean that it's not really there? Is any of this there? Is it supposed to represent the intangential? I can't even say that word. Intangible nature of video games. And there appears to be a wasteland beyond this wall. Yep. Not actually is that is that the chair that the fat man was in? Spray painted on grass with some candles? That's a fire hazard leaving those candles there. Then I thought, what the hell are we doing in this dump? Then I saw all the cool old bikes hanging around and realized, hey, there is some really cool shit in here. This appears to be some men in these pots trying to hide from us. You can't hide in there. Well, maybe you can because you're not real. Hmm. Uh, 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 I caught you. I figured there must be some reason my buddies dragged me here. They know where to go. I guess it's a good thing. I am open-minded and oh. easygoing. I see. They're not actually in the pots. If you saw there, these they actually come out of the ground behind them. So that no, almost like a 2D sprite. No matter where you're looking at it from, it looks like they're looking at you. That's weird. So I just turn my back, and aha! Gotcha. You can see him kind of slinking around right behind it. That's weird. Still can't do anything but walk. No interaction or anything. But games are art, so who says you need interaction? I have no problem with a man dying on the couch watching a movie. I have no problem that I had to watch out for his oxygen core so as not to step on it and cut off his breathing. I have no problem with motorcycles hung precariously over my head. I don't want to alarm you, but there appears to be a giant orca in the sky over there. I think we'll just turn around and continue down the path. Someone had a lot of ideas. I do have a problem with the bartender still being ridiculously unfriendly, even when we made an attempt to tell her we were going to an 80s party. And wait a minute, why should we have felt the need to explain to anyone why we are addressed anyway? These lens flares almost look like lasers with their precision. I can just burn out my eyes like this. And this is... Is this a cat under a table? Maybe? 
I also have a problem with the girl down from us, who looked like she too was going to the 80s party, but got grossly offended when I asked her if she was. Not sure where Sky Orca is going. Gazing around at millions of dollars in collectibles, a picture caught my eye. It was the most beautiful picture I have seen in ages. It was the cat picture. My heart skipped a beat. I was in love. I immediately inquired who the voluptuous redhead was. To say I was ecstatic to learn the sexy beast lived, there is an understatement. I knew I had to find the kitty. So, something... I looked everywhere calling it, making kissy sounds. Here kitty kitty kitty. No damn cat. I am usually a cat magnet. This one was playing hard to get. I went to the fat man and noticed a bench next to him and what appeared to be where the kitty slept. I said, hey Weezy, where's the cat? See, it may just appear on the surface to be a story about a man going to an 80s party and discovering the cat of his life, but I think there's more to it than that. Where's the damn cat? Have you seen the cat? Is this where it sleeps? He said, yeah, the cat sleeps there. The cat is under the tables. Man, I am totally jealous of the cat. He lives at a bar. I wonder how they can get away with a cat living in the bar. Oh, so I guess he never made it to the 80s party. He's still at the bar where he was asking ladies to come to the 80s party and discovered there was a cat at the bar. Quickendendum, Norm's ah. dead. The motorcycles are gone. Real sad. One star. Was this review helpful? Was this review helpful? One out of ten. I didn't know that uh, so many people were familiar with the Newgrounds rating scale. And of course, lens flare. Because nothing really is more artistic than a lens flare. Is there something in the window of the windmill? If you look there, it looks... Oh, okay, I think it's just the wall. It kind of looked like there was another one of those moving sprites. Also, this is the end. What have we really learned from our journey here in De Dear Esteban? Did we learn about a man and a cat? Or did we learn a deep story about the human condition? No one really knows. It's worth pointing out that the guy who made this uh, said this is not exactly, uh, you know, made to say, fuck you, dear Esther, but more of a sort of poking fun love letter at the Dear Esther and, you know, the artsy video game genre in general. Stuff like The Path. And such. But yeah, it's a, it's a weird little thing. I, I, I might be tempted to say that it was intentionally bad, but maybe, as I said, I just don't understand the artistry behind something like Dear Esteban. It's too much for a plebeian like me to pick up on. So I'll leave it to you in the comments to interpret it for yourself. I've been Shadefire, and I'll see you in another time and another place. Farewell.